So we are ready to start today. Happy New Year. This is February 1st. Happy Chinese New Year. Happy everything New Year. Um, today we're going to talk about the flood filter, which can, you can do some really cool stuff with it. I mean, it's really interesting what you can do if you play with it, you adjust it. If you do it right, I got lucky and got a loan print using the flood filter once, so I was happy with that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and share screen. And we'll get rid of these guys. Small. And just a reminder, we are going to be teaching at West Coast School this year. Come on, make it big. There you go. Photoshop zero to 16 a week. West Coast School, June 5th through the 12th. And that's going to be held at the University of San Diego in beautiful San Diego. Minutes from the airport. So if you need to get a ride, it's only a couple bucks to get there via Uber. Or if you've got a friend that can pick you up, it's even cheaper. So love to see you all there. We're going to have a good time. If you don't have a good time, you're at the wrong school. So enough of that guy. So let's go ahead and close him out. And can everybody see my screen with the yep. telephone poles, etc.? Yep. Cool. I went out after shooting a high school senior. I saw the full moon. I saw the color in the sky and said, I have to take this picture. So I did a six, six image stitch or panorama and made this. And I like the image, but it was just, yeah, it's OK. Um, but I'm going to make it into something a little bit better, I hope. So what I'm going to do is I am going to crop this a little differently. I'm going to add stuff at the bottom because I want to have room to add my flood down at the bottom. And to do that, I just took my crop tool, cleared the settings, and then dragged the bottom handle down to give me a little extra at the bottom, I'm going to click on content aware on the top toolbar up here and click on content aware. I can either hit enter or I can click on the checkbox. Either way, it's going to work, make things happen, add magic. Alakazam, Alakazoo. Computer's running slow. How about you? <clears throat> okay. It worked much faster before. Um, you can see it did a really, really bad job at the bottom with what it did. But I'm not worried about that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this image. I should have done that before. So we'll go to drop down, flatten image. And then I will copy that image so you can see what's on there when we do the flood filter. Go down to filter, flaming pair flood and that is a wicked cool easy way to get a flood in there and when it pops up normally what you get is this little screen here with an even tinier picture so when you try to look to see what all the dials are doing over here you can't really see it so what i will do is click on the green button bring it all the way back full screen Click up a couple times. Come on. One more, just to make it full screen there so I can see what's going on. <clears throat> With the tools on the left up here, view horizon starts at zero. Zero is the top, 100 is the bottom, which to me is backwards, but that's OK. And what you can do, ooh. Go back, go back, go back. Nope, too far. I'm going to do it about 70% because I like just the poles coming out of the water up there. Um, offset will drop down where it starts from your horizon line. So if you do offset at 100, it goes all the way down to the very bottom. If you do offset at zero, it goes all the way up to your horizon line. 
I'm going to take it just a little bit down. Uh, 5.9 or 6 is good to go. Perspective sets the steepness of the perspective for the water's wavy surface. So if you adjust it down to zero, you can see there's a little bit more, you're more at water's angle, and you can see the waves more. If you take it to 100, it's a little bit different. So um, I'm going to keep it probably about 14, 15 or thereabouts. And then altitude, not attitude, altitude, basically moves your camera up and down for the flood. So if I take it to 100 to max it out, um, it looks a lot lower than down to zero. I want a little bit of wave in there. So let's do about five, 4.3 is fine. Waviness is self-explanatory. Zero waves and gnarly waves. <coughs> so we're going to take it down eh, maybe around 13. For now, we can adjust it after we get started a little bit. A little bit less, I think, because I like, I like smoother waters. Complexity. You can make the waves a little bit more complex or smooth them out, your call. Let's go with about 44, 45%. Brilliance. Brilliance is um, how bright your wave is going to be. So if I take brilliance down to zero, you got really dark waves up to 100, and it brightens it up a whole lot. I kind of sort of like how that works at higher edge so and then you can also do a ripple in there so if somebody threw like a a stone and got some ripples going on um, the height of the ripple not doing a whole lot there so i'm not even going to mess with that undulation is kind of a little bit of waviness as well but it's not doing anything as either so let's just do it at that. And we will hit enter. I think, let me get that out of the way so I can see. Okay. Watch the flood filter work. It doesn't take too long once you set up your flood filter. Michael, I think for the ripple, you have to actually use your cursor and put a dot and that'll be the center of the ripple. Okay, I thank believe, you. I believe, I'm not sure. Well. That's more than I know about it because I rarely use it. So I'll try it on the next one, see what happens. <clears throat> but you can see what we got here. And let's go ahead and go F, F, Command R to get rid of the rulers. And you can see that almost looks like a flooded area, almost normal. And I, th I think it's pretty cool. This image went loan for me. Um, after discussion on the ugly border I put on it, but they actually let it go alone. So I was very happy with it. Any questions on that so far? No. Okay. Oh, sorry, can I just make a I, comment? You can. Yeah, uh, it's good that you, um, on the telephone poles that you had the reflection going into the angle toward the lens because um, I'm quite sure Dennis Hammond is looking at it also too as a judge that um, it is the actual physical reflection. Um, the reflection should be going toward the lens um, in the foreground. So that was really good that you uh, made sure that the reflection went to the um, axis of the center of the lens. So I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say because uh, when Dennis and I judge, we see reflections going the wrong direction. And so physically, you know, that's not true with light. You know, I never thought about that, but apparently the flood filter people did because they're the ones that have the reflection going towards the camera lens. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. You learn something every day. Where is this filter? Is this a part of Photoshop or is this something you, is this a plugin? This is a plugin 
And to get the plugin, let me go ahead and go to flamingpair.com and go to products. You can get flood two, which also has flood one in it, or you can go to older under products and original flood. So it's flamingpair.com, like a fruit that's on fire, flaming pear. And it works for both Windows and Mac. Um, and I'm not sure what the cost is anymore. Get your free trial, it doesn't say what the cost is. Let's see what purchase says. Flood two is $33 now. So that's still not bad. It's, it's a cool toy. Um, thank you, Mel, for putting that up there. And here's oh. another, go ahead. Nope. Okay. No, I take my number off this. This is not Josh. I've said that several times. The original's $15. The original's $15 right now? That, that's a deal. <clears throat> Okay, again, we'll go to Flaming Pear, out of filters, go to Flood. Oops, maybe not. Sorry, that's an upgrade to, from original okay. to two. Okay. So this is pretty um, close. Michael, I have perhaps a silly question, I but silly have answer. you tried this on clouds? I have not. Um, after this image, I'll pull up a cloud and see how it looks. Okay. I mean, What's the worst it can do? <laughs> That's true. And again, we can we can do all kinds of stuff with the offset on here. We can bring it up closer and closer. Um, I have a that, question for Dwight. Go ahead. Hey, Dwight. So, so you're saying on the reflection on the telephone poles of the facing facing head on with the camera is a lot hard, uh, better score than if it was going, if I'm looking at it left to right, the, the reflection going left, would that be a less of a, a, a good score? Okay, um, I, I think uh, I'm going to try to uh, interpret your question. Um, Whenever, okay, like for this image that we're looking at right now, where the streak of light, where I, I think that's a rocket going up, and yeah. the reflection is uh, pretty much going at the bottom reflection is going directly toward the center of the lens. Uh, that's where it should be. At, we're looking at the bottom end. So any image or item that is on the wide left or right side should be, um, how do you say, perspective toward the center. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, you want to jump in on that one? Well, not only that, but on that previous shot, the sunset was behind. And so the sunset, the light direction would have illuminated if that was the case to bring the uh, shadows back towards the camera. So you have to be cognizant of which way the shadows are going when, or the ripples in the ripples. So it's just not that image. So uh, as Dwight mentioned, there's one thing in competition. I see people have used this and they've, uh, the light direction is coming from the back and they like to have a prison. And then they have different angles. And they manipulate them different ways so uh it's a cool effect just have to be careful of the reflections and what you do with them and how the ripples are actually represented if they're really true i i, I think if you're entering it into the um, artist category or master artist category then i would say be technically more accurate because uh, you're in full control of the filter and what you're doing um and I guess as we do artist judging, uh, we'll see the error. And I, I think I would mark it off, mark points off of that because you're in full control of the filter and it, it should be accurate. But I think Dennis and I think if, if this was an illustrative piece or a fantasy piece, you know, you probably can get away with it in the photographic open category. Okay, okay. The shadows and the, the everything should line up anyway. Mm -hmm whether no matter what category you're going in so just got to be careful of that um, thank you i'm going to reset that there's a reset button down here at the bottom click on reset and go back to that's the default and on the 
bottom two rows of dots down here, there's one that looks like a pair of dice or a die. It's called randomize. So I'm just going to click on the die and let it decide what it wants to do itself. And it's like, eh, that didn't quite work. So I'm going to reset it and go back to where we started a long time ago. And just trying to get the water to line up with the horizon is probably the biggest challenge. <clears throat> Waviness, I'm going to take it down because I want a little bit less wave going on because that is a long exposure, should be uh, less waviness going on. Brilliance, 42 seems to be the magic number. Um, that's where they, they keep it at for themselves. And just, you go in and you play with the dials to figure out what works for you. And then just drop it in. So you mm. have before and after. <coughs> and you can see it, it kind of looks like water, especially if you don't look too close at it. If you look too close, that's not too bad. You may have to go in and clean up, clean up a few things like the spot right here. Would you keep that light in there, Mikey? Which why are you talking about? Like to your to your right, right at the tree level. Um, it all depends. You know, you could take a look at it. I think I would have to because there's such a big starburst there. Right. This is shot at F-16, so it's got a big starburst there. Take it out would be a little bit of work. Not that I'm lazy or anything, but oh, never mind, I am lazy. Um, it could be done. It just take a few minutes. So Cindy was asking about clouds. Let's go to stock images. What kind of cloud would you like? You want a sunset cloud or a nice warm cloudy day? I was thinking like big cumulonimbus clouds. So maybe you could get a wave in there or something. I don't know. Just maybe an arty effect is what I'm thinking of. Well, let's go with I'll do that one. And we'll do the same trick with the crop tool. So I'll add a little down at the bottom, make sure content aware is checked, which you don't really have to because the flood filter is gonna cover it up, but I'm gonna put it in there anyway. Wait a few seconds and a few more seconds. And a few more seconds. Uh, okay, that's not bad. And so let's go ahead and command J to make a duplicate layer so we can do it before and after. Go to flaming flood. Let's do flood two this time. It's pretty much the same thing, but, and again, you can see that it does the um, small window at first. I like a bigger window so I can see what I'm doing. Bigger, bigger, and bigger. Cool. <clears throat> Waviness, let's take it down a little bit so we can get some, a little bit less. It's a sunny day. I'm going to bring the the brilliance up a little bit. Perspective. Let's tweak that a little bit. Um, no. 
that didn't work. Okay. When all else fails, <coughs> zero. I said zero. And voila. I said voila. That means you come up and make me look good. Or not. You can tell when Photoshop's working with Zoom because it slows down a whole heck of a lot. That's when you start sweating bullets going, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Your forehead starts sweating and that did not work at all. Go back to flood. So you can do some really cool things with this. Click here to place the ripple. Okay. We'll place the ripple there. Make a little bit of a size. Undulation. There we go. And let's see what happens when I click OK this time. There you go. It kind of makes a mirror image and then you just adjust the undulation or everything that you want in the water to make it wavy or not, so. You really need a horizon there to make it real. Yeah, I think so. But it makes a cool artistic piece too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make a... Like it, 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 it's interesting. Thanks, Michael, for doing that's that. It's a crocodile head. Yeah, that's it, it's a crocodile head. <laughs> so if you have, let me close this one, Command W, don't save, and we'll go back, and the question comes up, does it work with black and white? Well, filter, flaming pair, flood, I'll drop the horizon just a little bit. A little bit of wave to match up with big guys making a bunch of waves in the water and then click OK. And you can see that one went really fast. So, and you could drop your horizon down a little bit so they're out of the water or raise it up so they're stepping in the water. Um, all kinds of cool stuff you can do, but it works with color or black and white. And then if you don't like the black and white, you go to filter, neural filters, and we'll go to colorize, click OK. And there you have a color version of it. Original color, color with the flood. So Photoshop thought they knew what I wanted. But they didn't. So any questions on that? Quick and easy. My voice is running running on empty today. I've got a cold, so. Yeah, Mike, um, on the bottom of your work screen on the flood, you have those on the bottom right, you have the sequence or the series of those little dots. Um, I think those are, are those presets? Um, on the bottom screen on the, would somebody know? You're talking about down here, the little thing goes in a circle? Yes, yes. 
I've got no idea. You you stop <laughs> sharing so we can't see what you're doing. Yeah, That's I good because it just went. Save your presets. It just went wonky on me anyway. So right, right. Mike, you can save your presets. Because mm -hmm. I did. I could never remember how to use that. <laughs> Yeah, I do not know. I've never played with that before. No. You can save the presets. If you look over where there's little circles with the red and the blue right under the word normal. Okay. Those, I think the one to the right. Yeah, the blue one, I think you save the preset. Save settings, and then you got load settings. Yeah, so you can okay. load it once you saved it. Cool. I've never played with that before. And of course I, I could read the instructions, I guess, and <laughs> that might be helpful. Have to take away your man card then. Right, <laughs> real men don't read instructions. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that doesn't uh, compute. Yeah. GPS, what's that? I know where I'm going. Took me the three next days. Thing you know, Mike will be pulling a map out of the glove box. <laughs> A Rand McNally nap, map. No, oh, no, a Thomas Brothers. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Brothers, there Thomas you go. Brothers. That's a full book, though. That's not a map. I have one That's of them. true. I used to did. Back in the days when I was a sheriff, we had to use the Thomas Brothers to figure out where the heck we were going on these small streets out in the boonies. That was a challenge. Any other questions on this? Feel free to ask. No I question. think for most people, for most people, like these kind of programs, it's just a matter of getting them and playing with them and adapting to their their style and look. And yeah. I look at what you do, and um, I know when I had the first flood, I mean, I just took and played and played with different things. It's not for every shot; it's just maybe to enhance a few things. Uh, you're lucky you got some comp shots because a lot of times, you know, I know Dwight and I have seen this, and we see competition. People have done this, and it's so noticeable that's added in that that is usually a takedown for me as well. But I'm sure Dwight, but you know, if you can do it, adjust your layers and, and do some uh, blending with it. I think the key to it is blending and adjusting your layers with it in the mode. So it isn't so noticeable. That makes I think if difference. you don't, if you don't go over the top with it, if you kind of pull back and not really push it really hard, it's not as noticeable. Dennis, you just have to understand our artistic approach. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis needs to be an artist. It's artist choice, always. Always. The artist <laughs> is always correct. You know, I've used this a lot. No, not a lot. A few times on some senior graduation, grad senior grad pictures and I try to introduce that and they rejected it they just didn't think it was really neat they they I, I don't know these kids nowadays they're they must be smoking something really bad and didn't see the artistic value <laughs> <laughs> maybe you were the one smoking something really bad no 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 <laughs> I was pretty sober like John Powers <laughs> really love you Dennis Okay, Thanks, let me turn off the recording real quick and we can ask all the questions we want then. <laughs>